Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. I want to talk about the Ape Canyon incident today, or the Battle of Ape Canyon, as you might call it. It's one of the most popular Bigfoot stories ever. It's been talked about a lot, like a lot. It's probably the number one Bigfoot story, aside from the Patterson footage. Um, but I wanted to talk about it because I had a really weird dream a couple nights ago that really reminded me of the Ape Canyon incident scared the absolute living hell out of me and it made me like question if I would be ready to come face to face with one of these things or multiple you know Bigfoot creatures uh, I don't usually have Bigfoot dreams like believe it or not like the, for the amount of time I put into the subject I've probably only had like one or two dreams in the past about Bigfoot other than last it was two nights ago um, I had this crazy dream where I got a call that people from our group at the Alberta Sasquatch organization were like in the mountains somewhere and um, they were on the side of some mountain and they ended up running into a group of these Sasquatch creatures so I'm like okay I gotta get there like this is my time I can finally see one of these things get footage so I, I get in my car I go to the mountains and I get to where the group is supposed to be and when I get there I meet up with one of the people in the group this guy and he's like telling me how one of these creatures had gotten like right in his face and was like screaming in his face and it just scared the shit out of him and the way he described that experience like in the dream was pretty like creepy and it really set the stage for the rest of the dream so I'm like holy crap like this is gonna be crazy so I grab my backpack out of my vehicle. I'm loading it with like camera equipment and like a bunch of snacks, like junk food and stuff, it's like gummy worms and gummy bears and crap like that. It, <laughs> it was super weird and random. But I grab my bag and then he said, the guy I was with, he said the rest of the team was up on the mountain right now and they're like having an encounter, like as we speak, like, and it's not a good one. So we hustle up the mountain to get to where they are. And when we get there, it's like getting dark out. Like it's almost dark. It's almost like as it is right now. Like it's not completely dark. It's just like dusk. Um, and we're going up the mountain. And when we get to where the rest of the the group is, there's like two or three of these Sasquatch creatures coming down the mountain towards us. Like relatively close, probably like 30 feet away. And it was just dark enough to where you, you could see them. But they were jet black, like they just looked like black silhouettes basically. You couldn't see any details because of how dark it was. But you could still see their shapes. And they were hurling rocks at everyone, basically. And screaming, making like Sierra sound style noises and whooping calls and it was terrifying. Like it was I I was actually scared in the dream and it was really vivid. And I woke up from this right after a giant rock comes flying past my head <laughs> I wake up and I was like creeped out when I woke up like it, the ambiance of the dream and everything that was happening and how viv vivid it was it was like terrifying I didn't want to go back to bed so I just laid in my tent in my sleeping bag and I was just like thinking about it like wow like if I put those images of what I saw in that dream into a movie like it would be terrifying but it made me think of the Ape Canyon incident because that is a case where, you know, a group of people, a group of miners, prospectors, were being attacked in that fashion. They had the luxury of being inside of a cabin while this was going on, but, uh, you know, they had a terrifying experience of being attacked by a group of Sasquatch. That was back in 1924. Um... I'll go over the story briefly for those who aren't familiar with it if you're new to the channel. In 1924, there was a group of prospectors that had like a claim or something up on, I think it was the east side of Mount St. Helens. And um, they all went up there in, I think, I want to say it was June or July. I can't remember the exact month. Uh, but for like a week or so, before this attack happened, they were hearing like weird noises, like whistling sounds and vocalizations and whatnot. Like they'd be coming from different directions, like they were communicating. 
Um, they were finding weird footprints. And then one day, two of the two of the men, one of them named Fred Beck, he's the guy who like told the story. They they went to this creek that was a little ways away from the cabin that they had there. They had built this cabin themselves, and they said it was like a pretty sturdy cabin, like a log cabin. They left the cabin like a hundred meters or so to go to this creek to get water. And when they went to go get water, they end up seeing one of these things, one of these creatures. And they open fire on it. Like the one guy starts shooting at it. And um, I don't know if it died or not. They didn't know if it died or not. But it was later that night where they came under attack by a group of Sasquatch. They don't know how many exactly. I think they only seen like three or four of them like visually. But all throughout the night they were being like bombarded by rocks and boulders. So these things were like throwing them at the cabin and even like punching through the cabin logs basically like through the chinking like the stuff that's in between the logs they punch through that and like were reaching inside the cabin i think at one point one of them like was able to grab an axe that was inside of the cabin and almost pulled it out it was a really it's a really crazy story and and the men inside are all they're shooting at these things from inside the cabin like they can hear them on the roof they're shooting holes through the roof like it's just a it's total chaos throughout the night. It would die down every now and then for a little bit, but then it would pick up and it was just on and on and on through the night um, until, you know, dawn was breaking and it died off and they disappeared and they decided to get the hell out of there first thing in the morning, basically. Um, it just made me think like, if what I experienced in my dream terrified me that much and it was just a dream and the stuff that I saw in the dream wasn't nearly as intense as what is described in that Ape Canyon story. Man, those guys must have been traumatized. If it's a true story, those guys must have been traumatized. And it makes me wonder, like, if I'm even ready to, like, come face to face with one of these things. Who knows what it would do? You know, I have no desire to shoot at one or piss one of these things off. But you never know what's going to happen. And you don't know how many there's going to be. And in my dream, I remember like w once we got to where these things were and we I actually saw them, I had my camera around my neck and I was frantically trying to like get it running and focused. And I totally failed. I told I couldn't do it in the dream. This rock came flying past my head on my left side. And, and that was it. So I don't know how I would react. It would definitely be, I, I think, a really traumatic experience seeing one. And, yeah, I don't know. Don't be aggressive towards them, I would say, you know, because you don't want anything like that happening. I hope it wasn't a premonition or a vision of the future, because that would be the worst. And, like, thinking about the dream and how scared I was in the dream with other people from the group in that dream. I usually go to these places alone. Like, sometimes I'll hike in 20 kilometers to a place by myself and spend multiple nights there. Uh, like, running into one of these things alone in an incredibly remote area. And then thinking about other stories, like the 1924 story. Like the same year as the Ape Canyon incident, the 1924 incident of Albert Osman getting taken while sleeping in his sleeping bag alone. On the west coast of British Columbia, thinking of that, like... Sometimes I don't think before I do some of these things and go into some of these areas, but I haven't been hurt yet. I haven't really gotten lost yet. Nothing bad has happened, but I guess there's a first time for everything. I'm usually pretty careful. I have quite a bit of outdoors experience. Um, but how much experience is going to save you from getting taken by a Sasquatch or attacked by a group of Sasquatch? I don't know. And then you think of all the stories of the missing people in the national parks all the missing 411 books that have been written by david polites like you think of all those stories and then it's just like man what is going on there's some really crazy stories out there and uh it's just are they true or are they just legends i mean with the ape canyon thing there is like documentation proving they were there and that they left in a hurry and people have like claim to have found the actual site where the cabin was also because I guess it somehow survived the eruption 
at Mount St. Helens. Uh, Mark Marcel is the guy's name who is responsible for a lot of that. And, um, like, a lot of the, the evidence they found on site matches with, like, a lot of documentation, like, paperwork stuff that they have. So it, it seems like there was actually something that went on there. Was it exaggerated at all? Was it a, just a story they made up to, like, get into the newspapers? I don't know, because the story was in all the newspapers at the time. Uh, but that's just what I wanted to talk about in today's video. I wanted to share that dream. Like, the only other time I had a Sasquatch dream that I, like, remember, I think I had one or two, but I only really remember one, and I was just walking through the woods in that one, and I remember just coming across two Sasquatch that were both carrying like a giant log and they were on each end of the log carrying it on their shoulders and I just was like watching these things walk by and I'm like what the hell is going on <laughs> that's the only other time I really remember having a dream like that but I hope I don't have one a, an actual experience like the dream I had the other night because it was terrifying thanks for watching this video we'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries